Good evening and welcome to Signature TV News This Hour. I'm Charles Pius. In the headline, schools and offices closed across the United Arab Emirates as heavy rains pound the desert country. Nigerian workers and pensioners narrate their ordeal on the occasion of this year's May Day. An Amber State government arrests man for giving out his underage daughter in marriage. The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation announces upward review of maximum deposit insurance coverage for banks. In sports, new exco of Association of Ex-Rangers players commits to improved welfare of members. And now the news in detail. Schools and many offices were closed across the United Arab Emirates, UAE, on Thursday as heavy rains returned to the desert country just two weeks after record downpours that, ex that experts linked to climate change. A lightning storm with high winds swept across the oil-rich monarchy overnight, with more than 50 millimeters of rain falling before 8 a.m. in some areas. A spokesman that flooding said that flooding was seen in some parts of financial hub Dubai and the city's airports, the world's busiest by international passenger traffic, cancelled 13 flights and diverted five. State-owned Dubai-based Emirates and sister airline Fly Dubai both warned passengers of delays as schools switched to remote learning and public sector offices closed. But the rains were not on scale of April 16 when a record 259.5 millimeters of rain left four people dead, blocked major roads four days and forced the cancellation of more than 2,000 flights. On Thursday, little traffic was seen on Dubai's normally heavy six-lane highways and cars were abundant on flooded roads near the sprawling Ibn Butat Mall. Last month's downpour, which also killed 21 people in neighboring Oman, was the heaviest in the UAE, a majority expatriate federation of seven Shekodoms since records began in 1949. World's Weather Attribution, a network of scientists and assesses the role of the climate change in extreme weather events, found the deluge was most likely exacerbated by global warming caused by burning fossil fuels. An explosion followed by a large plume of smoke was seen rising over the Gaza Strip on Thursday. Israel awaits a response from Hamas on the latest ceasefire offer presented by Egyptian mediators which would bring about the release of some of the people the Palestinian faction seized in October 7 cross-border attack that triggered the Gaza war. Past efforts stumbled over a Hamas demand for a commitment to end the war by Israel, which insists on eventually resuming the now almost seven-month-old offensive to dismantle the faction. Israel has also described as imminent a long-threatened push into Rafah on Gaza's southern border with Egypt, which is described as the last bastion of Hamas. Rafa is a temporary home of around one million displaced Palestinians whose fate worries the international community. South Korea's National Assembly voted on Thursday to approve a bill backed by the ruling and opposition parties to launch a fresh probe into the deadly Halloween crowd crush in Seoul in 2022. As family members of the victims urge authorities to investigate thoroughly and take responsibility. An earlier bill, which was backed by the opposition-led parliament without the support of the ruling People Power Party, was vetoed by President Yoon suk Yeol in January. The latest bill is a compromise that removes granting full investigative power to the panel, which Yoon had objected to. According to his office, under the bill, a committee made up of members uh, recommended by two major parties and a chair chosen by them through consultation will look into the tragedy. The Halloween crowd crush in Seoul's Itaewon uh, district in 2022 killed nearly 160 people and a police investigation published early last year concluded that a lack of preparation and an inadequate response were the main factors behind the deadly crush. No senior government figures, including the Interior and Safety Minister, have resigned or been sacked so far over the crush. The implementation of a new national minimum wage for Nigerian workers, which is expected to take effect from 1st of May, dominated discussions on the occasion of this year's Workers' Day, with the government assuring that May 1st remains the effective day for its takeoff. The Minister of State for Labour, Nkiruka Ayejocha, 
gave the assurance while addressing Nigerian workers at a May Day rally in Abuja. And elsewhere in Enugu, workers who marked the event at the Michael Obara Square lamented their ordeal in the face of biting economic hardship. Correspondent Chinemerem Ikebunam captured the event for signature television. Judging from the inflation in Nigeria, we are here in the popular Ababa market to find out how the average Nigerians survive. Everything is cost in Nigeria now. Everything is cost. Like green beans, now before green beans is 10,000, but now green beans is 30, 40, 50,000 a bag. Like Irish, um, this green pepper, green pepper is 80,000 now, 70,000. Now, poor people cannot buy it. One is 500 naira. Look at 400 naira. Irish, they cannot buy it. Cabbage, they cannot buy it. So it's meant for big people, have people that have money. So people are suffering in this Nigeria. We are not looking for government anymore. Because when we look at what is happening in Enugu State, it's very difficult for us. Both salary and many things. To even to somebody to come to buy something is difficult for us. We are just praying for God. It's like we are in hellfire in Nigeria. We are suffering much. Hunger, transportation. We can't travel any longer. Just from here to Daiki now is 600 now. It's too much. From Daiki to my place now, at least I will go up to 2,000 now. Before it's not up to uh, 1,000 now, but it's more than 3,000 now. The untold hardship of an average Nigerian worker is becoming increasingly difficult in the face of skyrocketing prices of goods and services. And as Nigerians join the rest of the world to celebrate the 2024 International Workers' Day, the big question is, where lies the hope of the average worker who has made enormous sacrifices for the development of the nation? In good state workers, we are not left out, as the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress in Ugu State Chapter celebrated the tenacity of the state's workforce at the Michael Obara Square. Our theme for this year's celebration in Enugu is People First. This is a principle that underscores our commitment to prioritizing the well-being and development of every citizen and worker in Enugu State. We are economically enslaved. That is all the truth. That our salaries is nothing to write home about. But uh, we must keep moving. We ask our workers to be patient with us because we are doing everything we can within the means available to government to keep doing all we can to make lives a lot better for workers in the United States. The question around the national minimum wage remains on the front burner as workers await the new salary structure, which ought to take effect from this month. The expectation of the worker is that the new salary package, when eventually announced, should be able to help them meet their financial challenges and at least eke out a decent living. Signature TV's interaction with some of these workers paints a picture of pain and agony. The local government workers seem to be the worst hit. Uh, in terms of the the take homes, like they said, our take home can no longer take us home, um, and it's been there for a long time. System is a holistic system, just like the body. When it affects the finger, it affects the whole body. If, I, if it affects the head, it affects the whole body. So government should be alive to her responsibility of taking care of the workers they have employed. Some others, however, showed appreciation to the government, but still asked for more. This government has done a lot, especially particularly in Enugu State, in seeing that workers are happy. And by the end of every May Day, workers expect something new. And this one is significant because we are expecting announcement of a, not just a minimum wage, but a living wage to Nigerian workers. The Workers' Day, which dates back to 1886, is set aside globally to celebrate workers, articulate their concerns, aspirations, and demand for a better working condition and standard of living. This year's celebration is coming at a time when Nigerians are confronted with challenges of hike in the price of fuel, electricity tariff, poor infrastructure, insecurity, devaluation of Naira, 
and unemployment, which are indicators that the nation is obviously not headed in the right direction. These are challenges which the government of the day must tackle to restore the hope of the Nigerian masses. Chinemerem Ikebuna reporting for Signature TV. As Nigerian workers lament their ordeal in the face of excruciating economic conditions, pensioners in Enugu State are also passing through hard times. Those who appeared for verification to be enrolled in the state pension scheme went home disappointed after waiting for hours under the scorching sun. Chinemere Mike Bunam also has the report. Local government workers and primary school teachers in Enugu State have for many years been subjected to unfair treatment when compared to other categories of workers. They were denied the national minimum wage enjoyed by other categories of workers, even when it was their fundamental right. The present administration of Pitamba not long ago put smiles on the faces of the council workers and primary school teachers by extending the same benefits to them, throwing them into frenzy. The administration went a step further to promise that the teachers and local government workers would begin to receive their pensions and gratuities, just like other state workers. This informs a series of verification processes ranging from online to biometrics put in place by the government to pave way for seamless payments of entitlements to these legitimate senior citizens. Unfortunately, the good intention of the state government has been fraught with challenges of poor implementation, subjecting these aged Enugu citizens to harrowing experiences. The scene at the headquarters of the Enugu South local government, one of the venues for the verification exercise as captured by Signature TV, leaves much to be desired and obviously not what is intended by the governor, Peter Mba. These retirees, their relatives and the next of kin of the diseased pensioners lament their ordeal and frustration. My immediate problem now is to pay me my, my gratitude. That is my immediate problem, to pay my gratitude. Previously, I was being paid um, my pension, but this, uh, this exercise, this exercise, it appears people, uh, I am neglected. I am neglected. I am supposed to be, I have my credentials, I have everything, you, can, you people can say it. My brother, he was paid a few months, few months before he died. He died uh, since January 2015, and the, the, the pension was stopped 2015, August. If they can pay the gratuity, good and fine, because the children are suffering so much. My wife passed away on uh, 2010. We gathered everything they said we should gather in Enugu uh, South Local Government. And then the pension board. Everything is, this is just part of it. It's in a very big sack. They collected all this. We've been coming. At times we travel to Nike, to Abane, to Enugu South. Some dies there, some dies on the road. So, no pension, no nothing. In Anambra, if you are late or if you're retired, it will not take two months. You are benefit, everything will be paid. Other respondents appealed to the state government to fine tune the process and lessen the stress the senior citizens are being subjected to just to collect their legitimate entitlements. The last government. Just two months after I'm by the government have safety that like no demonstration. My candy widows. My dad is late and I'm here for verification for the pension and gratuity. We've been here from Thursday, Friday to date. So I'm wondering how one person can verify like uh, thousands of persons. We have th almost three thousands of um, diseased uh, pensioners. They say that we are supposed to provide a uh, statement of account of diseased persons. Most of the diseased persons, uh, you can't trace their statement of account. Most of their accounts are dormant. 
Some of them said the banks have closed their account. They've not done BVN as at that kind 2013-2012. So and they, are, they said that it's a prerequisite for the verification exercise. So it's one of the problems that we're encountering. Many persons are going because they can't they can provide those things. And when you go to bank, you, can, you may not get it. To we pensioners, we are dying. We are dying. May you, His Excellency, help us to receive our gratuity and other debts. I know you, you, you will do it. I know you can do it. For now, the portal for the verification of the pensioners is said to have been shut down, leaving them even more confused. The Enugu state government sees the timely payment of these retirees as one way of reducing poverty in the state and ensuring that these beneficiaries and vulnerable ones maintain a reasonable and dignified standard of living. This good intention can only be achieved by ensuring that what should ordinarily be a teen of joy does not come with enormous pain as being currently experienced by these aged parents, grandparents and great-grandparents. Surely, they deserve a better deal, having labored for about 30 years to serve their state and the nation with their strength and intellect. Having listened to some of the persons who have come for their verification, some of them have told their stories, their devastating stories regarding not being paid their pensions or gratuities. And you will believe with me that these stories are quite devastating and need the immediate intervention of the state government. And from what some of them are saying, I believe that today's government will come to their rescue. Chine Merimi Kebun, I'm reporting for Signature TV. Still on Labour Matters, the Nigerian Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress, Anambra State, have in a joint address presented at Wednesday's May Day Rally in Orca demanded the resumption of payment of 12,000 Naira hardship allowance extended to workers and retirees as a result of effects of the oil subsidy removal. The allowance was only enjoyed from September to December 2023. The state branch chairman of Nigerian Labour Congress, Humphrey Warfor, who presented a joint address, said the allowance should continue till a new minimum wage is implemented in the country. While acknowledging the government's development efforts, the unionists demanded that a number of workers' welfare be considered as part of governor's solution mantra. Labour also asked government to handle the contributory pension scheme in the state, whereby workers' payments are not being remitted and recorded to their credit. Governor Chukuma Solido, who was represented on the occasion by the deputy governor, Onye Kachuku Ibezim, in his response, said most of the issues raised by Labour are receiving government attention. He said the State Civil Service Commission would be constituted in the next seven days, while actions would be initiated on other issues raised by the workers. March passed by various Labour groups and trade unions in the states featured at the Dr. Alex Ekweme Square venue of the May Day Rally. The Adambra state government has arrested one Uzo Chuku Okoli for giving out his underage daughter in marriage. Okoli was apprehended after his daughter reported to the state's Ministry of Women and Social Welfare about the ill treatment being meted out to her by her father and the man he forced to marry her. He forced her to marry, rather. This was disclosed in a statement issued by Chidema Ikenyong, the media aide to the state commissioner for women and social welfare. Ifi Ibinabo on Thursday. Ikenyo said the girl, identified as Choma, who is currently 16 years old, told the ministry that after the death of her mother, the father brought her back from Edo State, where they were going to school to take a husband. She alleged that she was first forced to live with a 17-year-old man at the age of 14, but after some time, she ran back to her father's house before she finally gave her out to a 34-year-old husband. Choma, who came along with her elder sister, explained that life with the said husband has been hell because he beats her and sometimes after beating her, pees in her mouth and that, that made her run away with her nine-month-old baby. The father, Uzochuku Okoli, who was in handcuff, threatened to deal with the daughter, uh, did, with the daughters if he made it out of prison, telling them to pray that he dies in prison because he will make life more miserable for them whenever he is released. Reacting to the developments, Ibinabo instructed that the case be charged to court so that the children can get justice, urging parents to be mindful of their children and direct them 
properly instead of pushing them to early marriage. Hoodlums on Thursday cra clashed in Ilepo, area of Lagos, leaving many people injured. It was gathered that a fight broke out in the market situated in the area on Wednesday night and continued till Thursday morning. Some shops were set on fire while some goods were destroyed in, some in the process. It was also learned that an early intervention by the police was restricted by the hoodlums. A fire service truck that drove into the market this morning was also forced to reverse after being pelted with stones. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 elections, Peter Obi, has blamed bad road infrastructure and insecurity under President Bola Tinubu's administration for the death of 35 persons from accidents in Kogi and Enugu states. Obi disclosed this in several posts on his official X handle on Wednesday. Record that the accident in Kogi on Sunday, which claimed 19 persons, and that in Enugu, which led to the death of 16 persons on Tuesday. He insists that the country's mega resources should be channeled to priority areas to fix internal roads to make them passable before going for superhighway projects, which will take the chunk of the resources meant for these essential areas. Obi had disagreed with the Nigerian federal government on the rationale for constructing a 700 kilometer Lagos Calabar coastal highway, for which the Nigerian government accused him of inciting Igbos against the Tinubu government. The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation has announced a revision of the maximum deposit insurance coverage for banks operating within the country. At a media briefing held in Abuja, NDIC's Managing Director Bello Hassan revealed the new coverage benchmarks. The MDIC for deposit money banks has been raised from 500,000 Naira to 5 million Naira. For microfinance banks from 200,000 Naira to 2 million Naira. For primary mortgage banks from 500,000 Naira to 2 million Naira. And for mobile money operator subscribers passed through from 500,000 Naira to 5 million Naira per subscriber. Hassan emphasized that the update aims to bolster depositors' safety, public trust, the inclusivity of financial services, and the overall stability of the financial sector. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and celebrity barman Pascal Okechuku, popularly known as Kubana Chief Priest, have reached an agreement to resolve the Naira abuse charge outside the court. The agreement for the out-of-court settlement was disclosed when the proceedings resumed on Thursday. Kubana chief priest appeared before Justice Kehinde Ogundare facing three counts related to abuse the national currency at a social gathering. These actions are in violation of the Central Bank Act of 2007. The defense headquarters on Thursday said two of eight officers involved in Tudumbiri mistaken airstrike that occurred in Kaduna State leading to the killing of over 70 persons are to face a court martial for acts of omission or commission with respect to the incident. Director of Defense Media Operation Major General Edward Buba disclosed this in Abuja on Thursday saying that the Board of Inquiry into the Tudumbiri incident that occurred in Kaduna State has concluded investigations. General Buba noted that the military conducted a painstaking investigation into the incident and has initiated disciplinary action against those culpable. General Buba reiterated that the Chief of Defense Staff, officers and personnel of the Armed Forces of Nigeria console with the families and loved ones of all those killed by the Saad airstrike. The Commissioner of Police for the Federal Capital Territory, Beneth Igwe, has ordered an urgent investigation into the death of a student at Veritas University in Abuja who, according to family members, was stabbed five times before passing away. A statement by the spokesperson of the FCT command, Josephine Ade, said Commissioner for, has directed the Deputy Commissioner in charge of CID to conduct a discreet investigation on the matter. The student, identified as Joshua Ojojo, Daniel Ejibo, was earlier on Wednesday reported to have died while exercising at the campus gymnasium. However, it was later discovered that he had five stab wounds on his back and his ribs, a development that was hidden from the family. Sources in the school had disclosed that Daniel Ejibo died on Tuesday night after he slumped while exercising and started fuming in the mouth at about 9 p.m. The university was said to have called his father to inform him about the incidents of slump, slumping 
and dying around 11 p.m. on the same Tuesday. However, a human rights lawyer, Deji Adeonju, who is representing the family, disclosed that the parents of the deceased students suspected foul play and gross negligence. The saying, all soldier never die, best captures the scene as the Association of Ex-Rangers International Footballers converged on Enugu. The high point of the event, which took place at the Inamde Azikiwe Stadium, was the election of a new executive to pilot the affairs of the association for the next three years. Signature Television was there. Ex-Rangers International Footballers Association has elected a new executive to pilot its affairs for the next three years. At a keenly contested election held in Enugu, Austin Igokolo emerged as the new chairman of the association after pulling 29 votes to narrowly defeat Donald Ago, who got 28 votes. Other elected officers include Jude Agada, who was returned as treasurer, Joe Mwafo emerged as the financial secretary, while Napoleon Hansom is the assistant secretary, among others. The electoral officer, Victor Oko, who applauded the process as free and fair, commended members for keeping the ranger spirit alive during the elections. Oko recalled the role played by that generation of Rangers players in boosting the Igbo spirit and the reintegrating the Igbo nation into Nigerian society after the Nigerian Civil War. He appealed to the Enugu State Governor, Peter Mba, to give priority attention to the welfare of old Rangers players to encourage the present crop of players to give out their best. He should, once in a while, look their way to know exactly what they need. Some of the us are not strong enough. Some are strong. Some are still earning, you know, doing something what what to earn a living to take care of the family. We have a lot of them that have ailments and they don't have work. And but they, let's look inwardly as a governor of the state to see what we can do about it. In his acceptance speech, the new chairman of the association, Austin Iguokolo, assured that his tenure will ensure improvement in the welfare of members. There is something we know. There is something that people know us for. There's a place we started from that gave us the name. I tell you, if it's not football, we won't be celebrating Christmas. If it's not football, we can't celebrate all It is football that made us to celebrate these great men that are gathered here today. Some pioneer players of Rangers International including Emma Okala and Chairman Kristen Chuku, who were in attendance, spoke to Signature TV. To God be the glory, you stated the obvious. It was transparent, peaceful, and peaceful. And we thank God. It's a family family. Nobody wins, nobody loses. It's family. That's what to bring out somebody to be at the time. The occasion provided an avenue for the S-Rangers international footballers to interact and share their experiences. Indeed, these were legends of the Igbo nation who deserve to be celebrated at all times, especially now that they are still alive. Rangers never say die. Nigerian superstar Oyi Kasola Aderingbebi, popularly known as Ara Star, has released an artwork and track list for her upcoming sophomore album, The Year I Turned 21. The Grammy-nominated singer who took to her social media pages to surprise her fans with an artwork and track list for her upcoming sophomore album said she looked like a bag of money as she snapped on the artwork. According to her, picturing in a highway setting while leaning on a vintage car made her to look like a bag of money. The music star already had that entire country anticipating her album, including fellow superstars such as Nigerian music star Whiskit, who reposted her artwork unveiling and showing support with a tag, Love It. The album featured some heavyweights across different countries in the world, like Nigeria's Asake and Sheyi Vibes, America's Givion and Coco Jones, and Brazil's Anita, amongst others. Star is a Nigerian singer and songwriter who began a fashion career at the age of 16 with Quove Model Management before deciding to pursue a career in music. Veteran Nollywood actress Shola Shobowale 
has clarified rumors surrounding her alleged arrests for drug trafficking in Saudi Arabia. During a recent episode of the King of Talk podcast with Teju Babyface, the 58-year-old film star reflected on the negative reports published about her in Nigeria after she moved to the United Kingdom to work in menial jobs. The actress revealed that one such report claimed she was killed in Saudi Arabia for drug trafficking and explained that many people were surprised to see her alive upon her return to Nigeria. The veteran actress disclosed that she paused her career to prioritize her children, emphasizing that she didn't expect anything in return. She also recalled leaving her lucrative acting job, which was earning her over five million naira within months in the early 2000s for menial jobs. And that's the news this hour. I'm Charles Pius. Thanks for watching.